Verb technology is up over 300% today in reaction to news that the company is starting a strategic relationship with TikTok. So the Utah-based provider of interactive video-based sales um, is partnering up with TikTok. This is a great thing for the stock, obviously a great thing for the company long term. In this video, I'll go over my thesis as to why I think this stock could over 10x over the coming months. And then in this video, I'll also break down short interest. And at the end of the video, right at the very end of the video, I will give a price prediction based on technical analysis. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit more about this partnership. So this news put the stock on track for its biggest one day gain since being public. Trading volume has surged to a record of 76 million shares, which compares to the full um, day average of about 42,000 shares. So massive jump in volume. The stock has been halted multiple times today for volatility. Verb said sellers on its Market Live platform can live stream their broadcasts on TikTok as well as on social media platforms at the same time. In addition, the sellers' customers can now check out directly on and through the TikTok app. And th this is a note from their CEO. So the integration with TikTok shop represents a pivotal moment in the evolution of Market Live, marrying the dynamic capabilities of Market Live with TikTok's visionary shop feature and enormously expansive reach of the TikTok platform. So this is this is pretty much a meme stock at this point in time. Um, you know, they they had a meme like rally earlier this year where shares rose about 70%, but that is still way higher than where we are right now. Um, so, you know, still definitely think there is massive upside for this company. Um, so this, this company has pretty interesting short number, short stats, which I'll go into in a second. But first off, let's talk about the shareholder list. So this is so important. So there are currently only five institutional shareholders. So five large asset managers own the stock. And I'll tell you why it was because if you take a look at the chart, the stock was heading to a delisting on the NASDAQ. Basically, the stock had done a split and, um, you know, in an attempt to uh, stay on the NASDAQ, that definitely was successful. And now um, the company obviously is, is getting all this interest from, from shareholders based on this, on this news. What I think is I think this news likely brings back in some major investors to this stock. So as I said, right now, only five different institutional shareholders own the stock and we can see that BlackRock you know sold out of their holdings um, over the past quarter um, we can see the Vanguard group did the same sold out over the past quarter uh, State Street also sold out all their shares over the past quarter and they did this because it looked as if the stock was going to be delisted um, but really what this definitely guarantees is this is the stock won't be delisted, which will obviously offers an opportunity to shareholders, right? Because now these larger asset managers are going to be allocating capital towards the stock. For those that don't know, Vanguard, State Street, BlackRock, they basically own every single stock that's publicly traded. Um, so outside of OTC stocks, so simply a stock being, um, you know, alive and well on the NASDAQ will really cause um, BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard to all buy the stock, even if they want to, even if they, they, they don't want to, because like I said, they buy pretty much every stock in the market. So now that this stock has shored up its ability to stay publicly traded on the main exchanges in the US, well, that is going to garner massive attention from these large asset managers, which in my opinion, are almost surely going to be buying the stock over the next quarter. So they probably haven't done it yet, but over the next couple of weeks, these large asset managers will roll into the stock. It's kind of just a matter of time. And then with that being said, let's take a look at some of the short interest numbers for this stock. So as we can see right now, there are zero shares available to be shorted for the stock. Um, and that is down from 20K uh, just nine hours ago. And we, we can see we had about 40,000 shares available to be shorted prior to the, to this move. 
now that's zero. So short selling definitely going to be, um, you know, cooling down a bit as we see the shorts uh, shares that are actually available drop significantly. And then we can see the short borrow fee rate is at 36%. For those that don't know, that basically says that it would take, or excuse me, 32%. Um, that basically means that investors that are um, lending out their shares to be shorted are charging 32% annually to um, do do so. Um, so the higher this number is, the less likely of, or excuse, me, excuse me, the higher this number is, the more likely a short squeeze is to happen. Typically, the average of, of the short borrow fee rate is about 3%. Uh, or excuse me, 0.3% to 3%. Um, so, you know, we're definitely above average for short borrow fee rate, which is definitely a good sign in terms of likelihood for a short squeeze. It basically tells you that it's very, it's becoming very expensive for short sellers to sh actually short this stock. And then one point I wanted to make about this stock um, is they have actually, um, they have called out illegal short selling activity within their stock. So, um, Basically, they had announced a couple months ago that the board of, of directors had begun examining measures to address the alleged illegal short selling of the stock, among other suspected trading violations. Um, so they they were really calling out this illegal trading within the stock, um, and and you can see you know this was obviously well before the news, almost you know nine months ago now, um, but. This is very typical amongst, you know, stocks that are, you know, quote unquote meme stocks or short squeeze stocks, whatever you want to call them, is that they have this, this allegation of illegal trading, illegal short selling. Um, that's very typical amongst the stock. I, I, I just thought it was interesting, right? It's kind of um verb fitting in with the uh, GameStop and the AMC crowd. I, I thought that was pretty interesting. And then let's take a look at at the company's financials super quickly so obviously it's a you know pre uh, profit company right now we're not profitable at this point in time but let's still take a look at some of the financials I'll, and i'll move through this relatively quickly so we can see here that price to sales is actually at 0.25 which is a which is a pretty sl like low number when you compare it to the sector median of 2.7 and Verb's five-year average of 311. So e e even on the financials basis, um, you know, looking at this from 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 the financial standpoint, the stock hasn't been cheaper in its history. Obviously, you know, it's not making money, all that good stuff. Um, but it, it it at least is interesting to see that price to sales number kind of looking very attractive. And then we can see that the revenue growth is. Well, or excuse me, was 68% over the past 12 months, which is definitely a high number above that sector median of about 10%. But it's also interesting to see that revenue growth over the next 12 months is projected to be at about negative 27%. Possibly this partnership here kind of changes this growth projection for the company. I wouldn't be shocked if they guided higher, um, you know, based on this partnership. So um, growth doesn't look as attractive, um, but I do think this revenue growth for the next 12 months is likely to kind of turn around here. And then let's take a look at the company's profitability metrics. So this gross profit margin is at 64%. For those that don't know, gross profit basically tells you what a company makes for what it sells. Um, so it's basically just revenue minus cost of goods sold. So this 64% number is a pretty good one. It's above the sector median and it's above Verb's five-year average of 36%. So on a profitability basis, the company is trading cheaper than it has in its history. And we also have about 82 cents in cash per share, which is roughly, you know, 26 percent of the market cap is in cash, which we do like to see. Um, and then let's take a look at the chart and give a price prediction based on technical analysis. So it is definitely a tough chart to call here. Um, personally, I you know, I, I do think it is a little ambitious to be jumping into the stock at this point in time because we do have a major resistance level at about $4.20. Um, so for my money, I'm going to be waiting until we get above this resistance level at 420. Then I think we likely see a move higher up to resistance at about $14. I picked this $14 level as it's where shares had um, bottomed intraday on the 23rd. 
of January. It's also where shares had bottomed in May and June of 2022. So I, I do I do see it as likely if we're able to move above this resistance level at 420, I do think we get a large, large gap up to about $13 over the coming uh, weeks. Gap up might not be the best uh, you know, word to use there, but I, I do think it is likely that we see a larger move higher over the coming weeks for this stock if we're able to kind of close one, uh, you know, one day's worth of um, just just one one candle um, above this 420 level, one daily candle above this 420 level, then I think we see an extremely quick and um, you know fast <laughs> move up to resistance at fourteen dollars. So there is massive upside within the stock. That's not just like a a thumbnail grab. There there, there truly is. I just want to see a break of this resistance level at 420 before I kind of dump jump in. Obviously, it's worth noting too that shares are oversold, or excuse me, are overbought according to RSI. So we have RSI at about 85. And this is where RSI was in January once we got that spike. Um, so, you know, RSI is kind of implying a pullback as well. So we're coming up to resistance. RSI is overbought. Don't be shocked if we get a somewhat of a short-term pullback, but like I said, once we're over this 420 level, it's really off to the races from a technical standpoint. And this is me making a call just purely based on the chart, not saying that the company long-term is bad or, or any, anything like that, just simply making a clear um, call based on the chart and nothing else. Um, like I said, my thesis is that the large asset managers kind of roll into this stock over the next couple weeks, which should force shares higher, even independent of this chart setup. So that's kind of what I'm thinking fundamentally. And then, like I said, the chart, once we get a move over this 420 level, I think we see a, a higher, a higher, um, you know, higher jump over, over the coming weeks for verb up to 14 bucks. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will end it there. If you got some value from this video, please leave a like. We post company breakdowns and important market moving news on this channel on a daily basis, so make sure you are subscribed. If you would like to receive my daily portfolio moves, my exits, my entries, and see how me and my team of analysts are trading the markets, join the Discord through the link in the description below to get our free 7-day trial. Also, if you would like to join our free daily newsletter, sign up to our Substack, which is linked below as well. With that being said, good luck, everyone. Happy trading. Happy investing.